Hey, this is JJ down here at ETR Truck Center in McDonough, Georgia. This is going to be just a video of showing how to disassemble a FS6406. Um, this is a mid-range transmission that you'd commonly find in a box truck or uh, like a F650 or something like that with a manual. But here we go. Enjoy. A 15 16 socket will remove these four bolts. <laughs> these lead bolts are nine sixteenths. Right, now we're going to take this reverse switch out here. Um, behind the reverse switch, you'll see there's three little detent balls when I pull this out. So don't lose those. You need to make sure that you pull those out with a magnet and keep up with them. You don't want to put that in the wash vat. Now, once you get the lid bolts out, I don't like to beat on the lid with a hammer because it's obviously made out of aluminum. So I like to take my little scraper here and try to scrape in between the actual case of the transmission and the lid. Just kind of pry it up. Definitely not supposed to be that floppy. There's four nuts that hold this speedometer housing onto this case. Uh, three quarter socket fits that. Thank you. 
trying to be real gentle and tap this thing on each side to kind of break it loose. When you start to pry this loose, you need to make absolutely sure that you're not uh, sticking your scraper in there and like squishing the shims. The shims behind this output shaft housing are what sets the end play on your main shaft. Now with that off, we can go ahead and remove the input shaft, and then we can pull the main shaft assembly out of this housing. Well, there's six bolts at this input shaft housing cover. Uh, there's no shims behind it, or nothing that's gonna fall out on the ground, or nothing like that. Just pull the bolts out, and then snatch the input shaft out. A half inch socket fits these bolts, by the way. Now when I lean this thing over like this, I'm gonna stuff a rag in between one of the legs of the synchronizer. Not the leg that is split, but the leg that is solid. I'll stick it through there and that helps me pull this thing out and then set it on the table. Sorry for the poor camera view here, but nothing special going on other than me stuffing this rag around the leg of a synchronizer just where I can pull it. All those parts and pieces in there sound like an old timey cash register. Now there's shims up under this, so make sure you don't lose them. And those shims are what sets the end play on your counter shaft. That cap also covers a corner of that reverse idler. So if you're trying to knock that reverse idler out from the inside without pulling that cap off, you're gonna have a bad day.
these bearings are not being reused. So I get my pry, pry bar here, or heel bar, and I stick it down here on this end of the bearing and I just knock it off. Pretty boring stuff here. Just pulling these bolts out of the six hole PTO covers here. Uh, nothing fancy going on. One thing to note to yourself, right now you would knock your reverse idler out from the front of the case to the back. And you need to make sure when you knock that shaft out where your that your reverse idler rides on, there's a little tiny ball that goes with that shaft. Don't lose that as well. Uh, you don't see it in the video. Um, knock that out of the video and go to the main shaft disassembly here. But make sure you do not lose that little ball. That That's what keys into the case. Go ahead and knock this freeze plug out. You're not going to reuse that. You'll be putting a new one in. I kind of cut away from everything and go into working on the main shaft here. But when you knock your reverse idler out, you need to be very careful not to lose the little ball on the end of it. That's going to look like this. All these pullers that I'm using, you can buy at G&W Tool Company. You can see there's a little spacer that was stuck to the back of that bear in there.
And this is the failed component here. The synchronizer has exploded and caused all kinds of little internal damage here. Now, I thought I was going to pull that out of there and pull it apart, show more of the damage, but that thing had already friction welded itself in there, so it wasn't coming out. All right, remove this little nose bearing here and that'll let you get in there to start pulling the rest of the stuff off. Now we got that snap ring off. I'm gonna show you how this ball um, is up underneath this washer here. So be very careful when you remove this and pay close attention. That ball key weighs into that washer. That ball is right in there. right there so pull that out don't lose it
And after I get this snap ring off here, you'll see there's one more ball in there and that'll be it. You see how the ball locks the washer into place. And after you remove this last little bearing here, you've disassembled this transmission. Um, thank y'all very much for watching. I hope this helped somebody out there. Don't forget right. to like and subscribe. Now we need to thank wash you. all this up.